everyone. Welcome to Big Time Memories. I'm Terry Sullivan along with Dave Drayson, and we are going to be taking a trip back in time to the days when the stars of Big Time Wrestling ruled Detroit, Michigan, Ohio, all over the Midwest. All over the world. That's right. And illustrating our memories will be exclusive photographs taken by this guy. You were the official photographer for years for Big Time Wrestling at Big Kobo. Big Time Wrestling, uh, Kobo Arena, uh, and magazines all around the world. Everybody asks about videotape uh, from Big Time Wrestling. There's very little that remains that's not already out there on YouTube or whatever. So these photos are literally the history, the history that remains of Big Time Wrestling. Yes, uh, I have tens and tens of thousands of photographs to share with the wrestling world, you uh, international Big Time Wrestling fans, and I hope you enjoy them. I'm sure we will. And the question that we have been asked to deal with today, to answer today, regards the whereabouts, some of the history, some of the backstory of Arriba, Luis, Luis Martinez, Martinez. One of our favorites. Oh, he was a dandy, wasn't he? What a great, great guy, yeah. Just to give you a little background on Luis, I knew him very well. He was born in Leon, Mexico in 1923. Uh, his parents came to the United States. Uh, they lived in the Chicago area, Chicagoland. And at a young age, he went into the U.S. Army for three years. See, I never knew that. Mm, yeah. Interesting. And uh, he was always a physical specimen. Oh, always yeah. Always working out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was in tremendous shape. To the, days, to, to the days when he died. Yes, he looked great. And after he got out of the U.S. Army, he uh, went back to Chicago, and he was working out in a gym. And he happened to meet a gentleman by the name of Steve Reeve who was on television at the time. And Louie being so strong and muscular, Steve said to him, you should get into a profession in sports. And the idea hit Louie of professional wrestling that he would watch on TV. Uh, he was trained in Chicago and he made his ring debut in 1952. Wow. And from there, just he became uh, known from everywhere in the United yeah. States, yeah. around the world, in Mexico. Uh, and he was an exciting uh, wrestling star. He really you know? was. He was in demand all over. And, you know, he wrestled on top main events or semifinals, the top of the card, all over the place. I mean, I've seen results from him in the 50s and 60s in San Francisco, from Dallas. He was in L.A., of course, Detroit, Florida. Everywhere, and he was working with all the top stars of the yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. uh, Buddy Rogers as champion, uh, Killer Kowalski, uh, so many top stars of the day that Louis wrestled with, and you know, brought fans to their feet every yeah. night. He was so exciting. I mean, he always gave 110 percent when he, he was in the ring. And one person, well, I don't even know if we can qualify it as a person that he wrestled, and only because. As we knew Louis, uh, he was missing a finger. That's right. And that incident happened when he was wrestling one of the wrestling bears. And during his encounter with the bear, the bear's muzzle came off, and the bear bit Louis's finger. And, you know, for years, Louis was nine fingered Louis. <laughs> and it, let's talk about, you know, the superstar that he was. You know, in the ring, uh, I always remember, you know, some of his finishing holds, like the Indian death line. Right. Oh, he would, you know, straddle the guy on his shoulders and pick up his legs and yell out that... Arriba! That famous name. Yeah. Uh, another one of his famous finishes that I remember, he would get a guy in the airplane spin. You know, when have you seen anybody use an airplane spin, you know, yeah. in the last... Oh, yeah. 40, 50 yeah, years. Yeah, right. Uh, but one of the things I always loved with Louis, because he brought a little bit of humor into his matches too, you know, brought in the crowd. But one thing I always remember that he always did, he'd get thrown out of the ring and he'd be dazed and confused. And at one point he would come to his senses and he would crawl underneath the ring, go in one side, come out the other. Of course, the opponent's and, over there yeah, the looking for him. Yeah, the opponent's over here looking for him. Where's he at? He'd come up from behind, yes. make a sneak attack, <laughs> boom, bing, bang, boom, <laughs> one, two, three, and another victory yeah. for Louis Martinez. Such a nice guy. But you know, the, interestingly, 
behind the scenes, he was often sort of the butt of jokes. And he took it so well. He had such a great sense of humor, a self-deprecating humor. He wasn't a real tall guy back right. in the day when so many of the guys were six feet at least. Huh. But he could match them in weight, but his height was often the thing that people would make fun of. And he was so cool about it. Just sit he back. He was, what, 5'7", five, 5'8", five, yeah. maybe? Yeah. But he weighed 230s. Two yeah. yeah. You know, great physique on him. Oh, you know, yeah. No doubt about that. Yeah. But the one thing about that, he may have been the butt of jokes. But I don't think I've ever heard a bad word spoken right. about Louis oh, Martinez yeah. it was always amongst good the boys in the dressing room. It was always good-natured, yeah, because he would take it. Yeah. Well, one thing he couldn't take is his Wiedemann's beard. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, oh, God, after, you know, shows, Louis, you know, loved to drink his Wiedemann's beer. But if you were driving with him, well, you'd better plan on stopping every 10 to 15 minutes on the highway because that Wiedemann's <laughs> went in one end and wanted to come out the other. And then the next morning he'd get up and he'd run that all off, right? He'd run around whatever city he was. You'd see him in downtown Detroit, downtown Toledo, wherever it was. Yes, he was, like I, you know, we said, always working out. Fitness always fanatic. A, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and one, I mean, like he worked in Detroit here where we both knew him. And at one point in time, he started a promotion with Ron Martinelli. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I think it was the UWA, Universal Wrestling or something like that. And I happened to work on the shows with him. Uh, at the time, Louis Martinez was the champion. And I happened to man uh, manage a guy named Blackjack Luke. Sure. And the yeah. very first show... We were victorious, and we were the champions. And Louis, from that day on, tried to get his title back, but we never gave it to him. Always chasing the gold. You know, one thing about Louis also is that he was such a family man. You know, behind the scenes, everybody knew him as Louis Ariba Martinez, you know, their uh, hometown hero. But, you know, I happen to know Louis. He didn't live too far from me. And... Uh, his wife and kids were his whole world. He had a son and a daughter who he just absolutely loved. Uh, but the one thing that, you know, I really felt sorry for him for was that his wife hated wrestling. Really? She hated professional wrestling. She hated him being in it. Uh, it was toward the twilight of his career. He wasn't making the thousands of dollars that, you know, uh, probably, you know, he was used to in right. the years prior. Yeah. And, you know, and over time he was getting up in age. But, boy, Louis Martinez was blind as a bat. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have a driver's license because he couldn't barely see. Couldn't pass the test. Yeah. yeah. And I can't tell you how many times we were on road trips together and things like that, and he'd want to drive my car, and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you can't see. Uh, but there'd be times that, you know, he didn't have a car, he didn't drive, and there'd be times we'd be going to shows. I'd be driving to a show in a, in a local town or, you know, somewhere in the Detroit area here. And I'd happen to spot Louis Martinez with his wrestling gear bag, and he's walking the street to the show. And it's like I knew that, you know, he didn't have a car, so it's like I'd stop and I'd pick him up and, you know, we'd ride the shows. But, you know, I'm the bad guy, he's the good guy. And back then, the fans couldn't see that kind of stuff. Right. So I'd have to drop him off to the arena or wherever the venue was. I'd have to drop him off a couple blocks away, you know, so fans wouldn't see us. You know, one thing, Dave, and one of the things that I admire so much about you is the fact that, you know, the question that came into us is whatever happened to Louis Martinez, and that's something a lot of us thought. But you actually spent a lot of time and energy to track him down, to figure out, because he disappeared yep. from the face of the earth back in the, what, 90s or early 2000s? Well, he was working for George Cannon Superstars of Wrestling and Dave McKegney, the Bear Man's shows in all around Ontario in the early to mid-1980s. And I had, right about that time, started to get out of, you know, managing and, you know, going on to a different career. But over time, uh, I just wondered what happened to some of my friends, right. you know, and I wondered what happened to Louis Martinez. It's like almost 30 years, I had no idea what happened to him. And through a friend of mine in Chicago, Rich Tito, uh, he helped me track Louis down because I knew Louis, you know, 
in his early days and his family lived in the Chicago area. So I, you know, went to Rich and asked him if he can, you know, help me locate Louis. And he did. And unfortunately, uh, he was in a place called the California Nursing Home in Ch downtown Chicago. And it's like, I uh, participated in a, a, the Alicia's House Food Bank benefits. I donated my time there. And it was always a golf tournament and raffle and things like that in the Chicago area. So I figured, well, the next time I go to this, I'm gonna go to the California Gardens and you know, go see my friend Louie. So I happened to go and the nurse said I would have 20 minutes. So I walked into his room and he was bedridden, barely even looked like the Louis Martinez that we knew. Sure. And he was very uncommunicative. But how old was he at this time? Do you remember? Late 80s, early 90s. And, you know, I went to Louis. I said, Louis, do you know who I am? And he just, just the little nod. And it's like, you know, I don't know what to say or ask him because he's really not speaking. So I said, do you remember, like, you know, Detroit and Cobo Arena? And it's like, you know, just a no. Do you remember The Chic? No. Bobo Brazil? No. Pompero Furpo? Bull Curry? And, you know, the dementia had just taken over on him that he just didn't even know he was a wrestler anymore. And I happened to say one other uh, name that I knew he would know, and I said, Jimmy Valiant. And his eyes perked up, and he said, Jimmy? And I said, yeah, Jimmy Valiant, he's gonna be here. And, you know, his eyes just lit up. And from there, you know, our time, the nurse came, said our time was up. We'd have to leave. So I took a couple pictures with Louie. Which we'll and, see. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, it's like, you know, I had to leave. And I'm walking out. And I just turned to him. And I see my friend just laying there. And I almost teared up, as I almost am now. Yeah. And. Very poignant I said, time. I definitely. said, yeah. Ariba. And he just gave me a thumbs up and a nice big smile, and I yeah. left. Well, I'm sure that was something that he appreciated. And uh, obviously, I, he had some memories that you were able to jog. And, you know, kudos to you for doing that and also arranging for Jimmy Valiant to go and visit. Jimmy him. Valiant did go uh, see him. They had a nice uh, short meeting. And, you know, Jimmy called me and told me about it. And I was happy that he went. Yeah. And there you have it. Whatever happened to Luis Martinez? Well, one final tribute, Terry. Uh, you being the greatest ring announcer that I have ever personally known, could you give Louis Martinez a final tribute and give a ring entrance like you used to do to him? Sure would. Ladies and gentlemen, from Monterey, Mexico, at 234 pounds, Arriba, Luis Martinez. Arriba.
I'm really proud to say that I'm a part of IBW. I take pride in IBW that we are a family-run company. It's a fight. It's a sport. At IBW, tradition has always mattered. You're going to see world-class professional big-time wrestling at its best. This ain't no sports entertainment. This is professional wrestling. International big-time wrestling's The Fix. Each and every week, your fix of IBW action. You want entertainment? Look no further than Rocks TV. International Big Time Wrestling! Wrestling fans, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also don't forget to ring that bell.